to another exciting tutorial on Pro Tools brought to you by Data Beat Different Studio. Today we're going to be talking about importing files inside of Pro Tools. We're going to be talking about some shortcut keys, uh, batch import files, importing files with the Digi Browser, dragging from the Digi Browser, dealing with MIDI and video, importing from the Digi Browser. All that stuff, all that stuff for me. So, open up a Pro Tools session so I can show you what it's all about. Let's go. So as you can see, I have my Pro Tools session opened up right now and I'm looking at my edit window page inside of Pro Tools. And the first thing that I wanna discuss with you guys is the import section preference page of Pro Tools. So if you all go to setup and click on preference, you will see this Pro Tools preference dialog box pop right open. And at the top, the tab that I want you guys to click on is the processing tab. And once inside of the processing tab, processing tab, okay, um, you will see an import uh, section down here. And inside of that section, we have all these different settings and we have these little boxes next to them, which allows us to enable or disable these settings once we have them checked or unchecked. So first, let's start with the convert imported WAV files to AES31 broadcast. AES31 is the standard format that's accepted in film television, radio, and music. So, by having it automatically convert to AES31, you're saving yourself, you know, the biggest headache of finishing a project and having to go back into your editor or uh, a different conversion program and converting to the appropriate file format that's needed for film, television, radio, or music. Below that, we have the automatically copy files on import feature. This feature takes any file on any volume and automatically copies it to the audio folder inside of the session you're working in. When this is not checked, the only thing you're seeing is a mirror image of a file on another volume. So if you were to import a file by dragging and dropping and this was not checked and you then deleted that file where it was originally located, then when you open the Pro Tools session again, it will search for that missing file. And if that file has already been deleted, it can't regenerate the file. But if you check automatically copy files on import this will not happen because when you drag and drop the file is automatically copied into your session now let's talk about the convert copied files to session format and for those of you who are new to Pro Tools you're probably saying to yourself what is session format all right don't sweat it let me explain a little bit. So up here, let's open up new session. And you see that we have, you know, session parameters where we got 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit float, sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz and can go with 48. Sorry, yeah, 48 kilohertz, 88.2, and 96 kilohertz. You know, if you change these parameters, say like we're working in a 48 kilohertz, 32-bit float or 24-bit float and we do a new session, you know, with that. Keeping that in mind, if we worked in a session format that was like at a 48 kilohertz sample rate, 24-bit uh, float or whatever, and then we imported a sample rate of 44.1. So this feature allows it to convert the imported format to the current session format. The don't convert sample rate on import is often used amongst film and television audio engineers if you're working on video uh, suites like uh, Avid Media Composer 
a feature like this will definitely come in handy for you. So next down we have the import Rex files as clip groups. And for those of you who are not familiar with Rex files, uh, a Rex file is an audio format that Recycle uses. And if you're not familiar with what Recycle is, it's a it's a sampling uh, software that Propeller had created. And if you're not familiar with Propeller Head, they're the ones that make reason. So Recycle takes your sample and cuts it up into slices, which is then called a Rex file. You can import that Rex file into Pro Tools as a slice, and then it comes back as a group inside of um, Pro Tool if you have this box check, import Rex files as clip groups. Then we have our drag and drop desktop conforms to session tempo, and we can hit no files, Rex and uh, acid files and or all files and once these files are brung inside of you know your Pro Tools session Pro Tools session temple takes over the temple that's in those Rex files or acid files okay alright let's get into something different now okay let's talk a little bit about shortcut keys for importing files inside of Pro Tools. So if you want to do the audio, it's Command Shift I or Control Shift I if you're on the PC and that will bring you into your import audio page. And if you want to do MIDI, you would do Command Option I or Control Alt I on the PC and then that will you know bring you to the MIDI um, import page where you can import MIDI stuff. If you want to do video, it's Command Option Shift I, or that would be Control Alt Shift I on PC, if I'm not mistaken. And that will allow you to search through your directory for any video file that you would like to import. And also, we have Option Shift I, and that will open up your session data. Or, I'm sorry, Alt Shift. I always forget about the PC users. Using that PC, Alt Shift I, if you want to open your region uh, import session data uh, window. Okay? And those are your quick keys. So, another way that you can get to your import dialog boxes without using the shortcut import keys uh, would be to go to File using your mouse and go to Import, and there you go. They're all there, the session data, the audio, MIDI, video, and also a clips groups, which doesn't have a quick key, so we weren't able to access that. Now, let's go into our audio import options section, and here we see the import audio box, dialog box pops up, and look at here, I got some tracks here that I can click on, and once I click on the track, it displays in our clips in current file and we can convert that file by hitting convert and then we see it comes over here into the clips to import section now uh, if you want to remove we can just simply click remove here and that is no longer a clip that is ready to be imported inside of Pro Tools now, if we want to get more than one file or audio clip inside our current file location, you can do it contiguously by holding down the shift button key and just clicking. And then now you see that what I have highlighted here, one through six, uh, represents the same thing down here. If we want to do uh, discontiguous files, we would hold down the command or the control key if you're working on a PC and click on the audio files that we want and look here, they pop up right into the clips and current files section as well. Okay? Now let's say that we want to demo one of these um, songs. For instance, um, Trading Places by Usher. 
So we click on that file that comes here in the clips and current file and then all we gotta do is hit that play button. Hey, I know what you're used to. There you go. We gotta do something different today. It plays right there and you can scrub through it if you want using the scrub icon. And this is like a little uh, volume knob as well. Okay, let's just stop that. Now, if we were going to import this file, this MP3 file of Usher into our session, we would hit convert and then hit done. So you also have a source sample rate as well and a quality conversion also. So these boxes here allow you to change the sample rate settings. So if you haven't done this in your preference section of the imports, but here's another chance that's offered for you to do it. Um, so once you change the settings here and hit done to import, then you're actually you know importing these new sample rates into the session. So I'm gonna go to 41 and then hit done. And it tells me, or asks me rather, to choose a destination folder to where I want this particular track to pop right into. I'm going to choose the current folder for the import into Pro Tools, um, which is my current session. If you see up here, importing in Pro Tools is my current session. And this is the audio files folder for that session. And if I hit open, the Usher file will be imported into this section. So I'm going to end there so that this can be part one of a two-part tutorial on importing data into Pro Tools. So it's to be continued, folks. Check you later. Peace.